because they're getting some technical stuff together. So I've set up our treatment area. If y'all want to come forward, if you want to come stand behind me, if this doesn't get going, we'll, we'll figure something out. So with the patient, usually the first time we would needle laying down supine so that if there's any kind of fainting reaction or negative response, yeah. Yeah. they're in a safe spot. I also want to make sure that they're not going to jerk and, and pull away during the dry needling treatment. Are we up? No, we're not we're yet. We're close. So I've got my supplies out. I've, I'm going to clean her skin with a little alcohol prep in just a minute. Then I've got a sharps container to dispose of the needles with. I've got cotton balls for hemostasis. I've got a supply of needles, different lengths, different gauges. I've got some gloves that I'm gonna, I'll put on and um, to provide a good treatment. So when, before we start needling, I didn't tell her I was gonna write on her. So in order, and one of the real positive about a needle class is it's gonna force you to learn surface anatomy and just being able to look at the body and know what's under the skin because one of the board's requirements for dry needling is to state which muscles you needle. So you're not just gonna randomly put muscles at a lateral elbow, you're gonna know that you were in the ECRL or the ECRB or the EDC or the ECU. And so we have to be specific. So if we think about the elbow, you may need to, if you can't see my, or Katie's elbow. So if we think about the elbow, we've got the supracondylar ridge coming right here and the supracondylar ridge ends right at the lateral epicondyle. And then just distal to the lateral epicondyle is the capitulum. <clears throat> and then with elbow muscle, we know that the brachioradialis is this large muscle that's coming across and it's originating at the supracondylar ridge of the humerus. And so we have the brachioradialis coming here. Sorry, Katie, I'm going wide. So we have our brachioradialis. And then just distal to that, we have our ECRB. I mean, I'm sorry, ECRL. ECRB is also is coming up to the lateral epicondyle. And then just to, to the side of it, we have our EDC, and then we have our ECU, and then this triangular muscle here from the lateral epicondyle to the olecranine process is our enconius. So we know where's what in the lateral epicondyle. So that is definitely one of the advantages to a good needling <coughs> course is being able to touch and identify, palpate, resist the muscles, feel them pop out into your hand and spend lots of time becoming an expert at what's under the skin. <coughs> so I'll try not to go right through the purple line. I don't know if that'll give you a tattoo or not. <laughs> It'd be interesting. <coughs> I was had at a, a CU class and a guy had the entire like rotator cuff tattooed onto his body. I'm like, dude, you can be my lab partner. This is <laughs> great. And good thing about this, we're going to keep this up on our page. So if you want to go back and refer to this at any point, it, it will be up there. And I just had a full circle moment. I feel like I'm holding a flashlight for my dad trying to fix something. So <laughs> please don't holler at me if I'm, if I'm shaking or shake. not holding it in the right spot. I wouldn't know it. How you doing, Katie? You I'm feeling good. good today? Yep. Nervous? I'm just not gonna look. You're not gonna look? Okay. Um, you don't have to look. <clears throat> is this the elbow that's been hurting? It is. All right. Where have you been hurting? Uh, lateral epicondyle. Right, right on the epicondyle. So usually I'm going to spend some time palpating for trigger points. So I'm just feeling around at what might be the pulp.
culprit. I feel a little taut band right there, and I, I look and I see that that's on the brachioradialis. I'm right, right in there. So I can approach the brachioradialis this way. I can come at it this way with the, with the needle, wherever that taut band is, wherever it's best approached. Or if I don't catch the trigger point one way, I may turn it around and come, come in the other way. And then, you know, frequently, right, the insertional area is painful. And so if I'm needling into this, I'm gonna needle into your lateral epicondyle, Katie. And I'm just going to come here, pop that. So I'm right on her lateral epicondyle. I can just peck around a little bit there for some periosteal pecking um, as a superficial dry needling um, treatment. I can leave that in for about 10 to 15 minutes if I want to, or I can leave it in for 30 seconds. And there's advantages for both. If I need to move to the next area, I'm going to take it out. If this is the main thing, I may leave it in for 10 or 15 minutes. I can hook up a little e-stem unit right there to that needle and leave that for 10 minutes if I wanted for a little electrical treatment into the muscle or onto the tendon, tendinous area. I probably wouldn't do e-stem right to the bone, but I would do that more in the muscle area. All right, you did good. Was that okay? All right, you think we can go a little deeper? Sure. All right, so that was superficial dry needling. <clears throat> so I'm going to find that little taut band again. I can feel the what? A knot. Yes, I can feel the trigger point as a little taut band in the muscle. If he doesn't, I do. <laughs> so now I'm just inserting into the muscle. Feel that? So I didn't feel a twitch. I pulled out, not all the way. I don't want to have to reinsert the needle. And then I'm going back in again. So I didn't have to pull the needle all the way out of the skin. I just pulled it back out of the muscle and then back into the muscle and just angled it slightly to help find that trigger point. I felt that. All right, you felt a little twitch? Yeah. So sometimes the twitches are rather large and the patient almost jumps or you'll, <clears throat> you'll feel a rather large twitch in the hand and sometimes they're rather small. So I would spend maybe three or four needles on the brachioradialis working the length. And so usually there is the larger portion of the muscle is where the trigger point resides or where the most of the trigger points reside. And that's the area that you would spend your time needling. All right. Raise your wrist up. Hold that, Katie. All right, and relax, okay? So there's the ECRB tendon. <clears throat> Pull up again and down. Just like poker face, aren't you? Mm -hmm. How much do the needles run? How much do they cost? Um, oh, that's terrible. I let a needle fly. That's, that is needling terrible. Uh, yeah, needling 101. I was just distracted. Needles are Do you cheap, find it? Great. Um, 10 cents, 20 cents? Yeah. They're pretty light within the cents range, like 20 cents a needle, <clears throat> something like that. So you may use 10 needles per session or something. All right, there went a little twitch. You felt a little soreness? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So again, right there in the, the brachioradialis. And so in and out several times, I could leave that needle in, then I could go to another muscle and needle that, and then another muscle, and then I could connect them with the little e-stem 
and run that for 15 minutes if I wanted to. And if she was telling me she was really tender at her elbow and then I didn't get a whole lot of trigger points, I'm gonna be scratching my head at what might be sending that pain signal down to the elbow. So for Katie, I, I didn't get a whole lot of twitching, so I may come up here to um, her supraspinatus and needle that for her um, subscapularis or different muscles that can refer to the lateral elbow. I know I treated a young lady, she was a college golfer, and she had medial elbow pain, negative nerve study, but lots of medial elbow pain, MRI was negative, we treated her conservatively, didn't get any better, and it was right when I became needle certified, and it was my first aha win. And so, pec minor refers pain to the medial elbow, and after one needle session, she was like, don't need you anymore, and, and so she was done, and she was better. And so, releasing those trigger points from her pec minor was a game changer. And so, no blood, no drops of blood from, from Katie. And that's a typical, I mean, it's not, so if I needle somebody and I put 20 needles in their arm, I might have one needle that bleeds, but it's not common that you're seeing a lot of blood with the dry needling treatment because the needle and the monofilament is so small and um, just in and out, no, no bleeding. What are some questions or thoughts that you have? So what you have to decide is,